Hey everyone, and welcome back to Sasquatch Theory. The channel has hit 20,000 subscribers, and I am proud to know that people from all over are interested in the topic and my videos. I want to say thank you again, and I am glad everyone is enjoying the channel. In this next video, I am interviewing two different gentlemen from the state of Texas. Both calls came from around the same time, so I thought, why not put them together into one episode? I find the state of Texas itself to be very interesting due to its size and diverse habitat. It seems to me that wildlife is very plentiful in the state of Texas. I have noticed a large amount of Bigfoot reports coming out of this area of the United States. It also appears the Sasquatches seem to be more aggressive and territorial towards humans in this region. I have my theories on that, but I could be wrong. It is possible that industry or some type of environmental change could have these creatures stirred up at this point in time. I believe Sasquatches are very much tied into nature and if too many changes are made all at once it could cause this type of behavior. I believe it to be a possibility for the Bigfoots to have an understanding of how humans work and operate, possibly even deeper than what we could realize. I know Texas has introduced exotic animals into its habitat and has many game ranches used for hunting big game. It is possible that introducing new changes in an environment could cause the Sasquatch to be more aggressive. Again, I can only speculate and wonder, and no one at this point in time really knows what's going on. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and hit the bell notification so you can be alerted when a new Sasquatch Theory video is up. Alright everyone, let's hear some Bigfoot encounters from the state of Texas. All right, well, welcome to Sasquatch Theory, and I appreciate you getting in contact with me and giving me a call. If you would, could you tell the viewers your encounters from the beginning, what you were doing, and maybe a little bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we got to talk, too. We had a couple of hiccups, hadn't we? <laughs> yeah, bad yeah, connections and talk. storms. Yeah, yeah, we had some storms go through here, but uh, yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in Texas, central Texas, so um yeah, kind of a little bit of the backstory, I guess, is uh me and my dad, we always hung out, you know, back when I was young, you know, real young and everything. We always had like go karts, mini bikes, things like that, you know. And mm -hmm. me and my dad did a lot of fishing together, hunting. So we were always outside, you know, always in the woods. Um this was like really the only encounter in the woods that really I knew of that I had, you know, my dad, my dad really, I don't think he had any encounters until this one, but, um, mm -hmm. kind of the backstory on it though, is my dad was a war hero and, uh, purple heart medal of valor in world war two. So he was a, you know, pretty tough dude, you know, he, nothing really rattled him, nothing scared him much you know that i ever noticed um you know he's always stand-up guy straightforward um you know yeah. kind of was just to the point on everything and uh anyway um back when i was really young you know i got motorcycles like when i was young i had my first real motorcycle like when i was 12 so it was a harley 90 i don't know if people even remember those but and then uh about 1976 i guess uh 75 76 around in that area uh he bought me a harley 125 and he had a harley 125 and a harley sprint 350 and we used to go really riding everywhere we would go every place trailer everywhere but uh we would go to my cousins and uh, my cousin lived in como texas which is in East Texas, it's about a hundred miles east to maybe 110 miles east of uh, Dallas. So we would go there, you know, just kind of see my grandma and uncle and cousins, you know, kind of have get-togethers and stuff. So uh, 
this time was probably late September because it was still a little warm, but it's kind of starting to cool, you know, and things like that. Um, so Como, Texas is, uh, it's small. I mean, it's really small. It's out by another town called Yantis. And I don't really know the population then, but I looked it up the other day and there was, I think in 2018, when they did a census, there was like maybe 700 people living there. It was pretty small. So back in the 70s, you know, I'm sure it was really small. A lot of country. Um, so uh, anyway, what we would do is uh, trailer our motorcycles there and we would go to my cousins and hang out, you know, and talk to everybody and kind of, you know get bored and everything and so my, me and my dad would kind of like say hey let's let's go you know so what we would do is get in the truck and take the motorcycles out and we would go these way out in the country man i mean he, all of it was country but we would even drive further and uh he wanted to let me drive on the roads you know to kind of see what that was like you know because we rode on the dirt and everything but driving on the roads it was just a lot different so he kind of wanted to teach me stuff so uh they had these roads that were called, I don't know why they call them Coke roads, but they call them Coke roads. But all it was was like dirt roads with oil over the top and maybe a little gravel. And they went all through the woods everywhere. So uh, this one time, you know, we said, let's go, you know. So we hopped in the truck and took off. And when we get there, we uh, unload the bikes and everything. And so... Um, you know, there's nothing like that freedom when you're a kid, you know, riding with the sun on you and riding out, you know, in the country and everything, the smells and everything. And, you know, we're just having a great time. You know, and my dad's behind me, probably about 100 yards, something like that, maybe. And he catches up to me and we're going down this one long coke road, they call it. And uh, there's woods on both sides. But when... Uh, I'm riding along, I'm noticing something that's just kind of out of the corner of my eye to my left, and the woods were probably maybe maybe 20 yards from the road, and uh, pretty thick, you know, but kind of what uh, I noticed was this thing was, it had to be eight, nine feet tall, kind of grayish brown and i couldn't really tell what it was but i mean it was massive it was big for what from what i could see and so i'm doing about maybe 30 miles an hour and this thing is staying up with us you know cutting through the woods it's just smacking saplings and cracking saplings over as it's running it's like I'm thinking in my mind, you know, what is this thing? You know, what is it? Is it going to attack me? Is it going to, you know, what's it doing? Is it just having some fun? Is it just curious? Because I'm sure not a lot of people go out there on motorcycles like what we did. So it might have been something new, you know, and it was just trying to kind of check us out. But uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, how you kind of get those, uh, the tingles, you know, and you kind of get this creepy feeling and, and the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you kind of start getting that fight or flight mode a little bit. I mean, you probably experienced that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I have a few times. Yeah, it's, you know, I think most people have and you just kind of get that feeling. So anyway, I was just like gunning it, you know, I was getting up 35, 40 miles an hour. Um, and this thing is still staying up with us and i'm seeing it out of the corner of my eye it's staying right up with me and my dad's kind of coming up closer behind me so uh, this thing followed us you know for a good and i'd say five eight minutes something like that till we finally got to where there was like a crossroads and I was like, man, I'm, this is when I'm, I'm going to turn around. We're coming back towards the truck. You know, I just kind of got so freaked out. And so the woods actually stopped right there at the crossroad because there was another road going across. So I just 
whipped it around there, you know, in the crossroads and turned around and started going back, you know, and as I'm going back by my dad, my dad's looking at me like, has this weird look on his face. And he didn't say a word or anything. He just kind of like looked at me like, you know, what are you doing? Or, or I couldn't really tell. But anyway, he whipped his back around. We're going and we're still going like 30, 35, 40 miles an hour, man. And this thing is, you know, now it's on my right. And I'm still seeing it. It's just cracking through the trees still. It's just staying up with us, you know, at almost 40 miles an hour. And so we finally get like to the edge of where the woods are almost back by the truck. And this thing stops right at the edge of the woods. And it's just, you know, from what I can tell, it's just, it's just sitting there, you know, I keep on going. I don't even look back. And, uh, so it was like about another few minute ride to the truck. So we get to the truck and everything, you know, and, and I hop off the bike, you know, and I'm really panicked and everything. And my dad pulls up, you know, and, you know, and him being you know, a pretty tough dude and everything. He's like, you know, boy, what were you doing going so fast, you know, and all that. And I was like, well, you know, dad, um, I don't know if I should even tell him or not, you know, but he knew something that freaked me out. So, uh. I was sitting there and I said, dad, I saw something in the woods, you know, and, and it was staying up with us. And, you know, and I could kind of tell my dad changed, you know, he changed a little bit then. He was kind of spooked too, from what I could say, you know, see in his face and his actions. And he was like, yeah, he goes, I saw it too. He said, I was hoping and praying that you weren't going to slow down to try to go see maybe what that was, he said, because he was freaked out, you know, and him being a war hero, everything for him to be scared. That was a real rare thing for me to see because I had, I don't think I had ever seen him scared like that. So we, uh, just threw the bikes on the trailer, you know, and, and took off and got back to my, uh, to my grandma's house. And I think we told my cousin maybe, because she was the only one that was kind of open to stuff like that. And she just looked at me like, you know, wow, you know, but we didn't really tell anybody else, you know. I don't even think we told my mom, because my mom would have been real freaked out. But that that was kind of like, that was the last time we ever went in the woods out by Como. Um, we still did trail riding and stuff like that after that, but that was the last time we ever did that in that area it freaked my dad out so bad he was like you know i've, I've never seen me and him sat down and talked about it. he's like i've never seen anything like that he said that was some that was a weird experience and he said you know that's he said i was really fearing that something was going to happen to us <laughs> so that was mm. it was just a strange strange sighting you know and i don't know really what it was it was kind of you know it could have been a bigfoot it was kind of hunched in a way it had a what i could see it didn't really have a neck or anything it did it was just in the upper part of it was massive and you know for it to just be cracking through trees as it's running and i wish i could have heard something but my motorcycle was so loud i couldn't really hear if it was grunting or you know anything like that but i could just hear it cracking trees that's about all i could hear just you know and see trees getting snapped over but it stayed right beyond the sight line you know it never did come out of the forest that was what was really weird it stayed right inside the woods just just so you could see it but that's about it Mm-hmm. yeah it sounds like it was trying to scare you guys off yeah. right from the beginning yeah i mean what do you think i mean i think it maybe think it was it, just really curious or i mean to me that kind of sounds like an alpha male from what i've heard like they won't mess around they'll they'll run you out immediately they won't play games like the younger ones right right so that's kind of what I've got. I'm really curious. 
I was really curious, you know, if anybody else has had any experiences like that, riding motorcycles, you know, and how can that thing be up, you know, cheetah speed almost, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't. Well, it's like the, the theory I had on another episode, how maybe they can hear through their feet. And really? that's, I was kind of talking to a guy about that, you know, maybe like chainsawing, like, you know, it vibrates the ground through the roots and they don't like that. Or maybe like somebody hitting like a bucket from a tractor, you know, on, on rocks, you know, you've heard stories of those being flipped yeah. over and torn apart. Really? Wow. Maybe, maybe the Harley really angered it. That's what I was saying. Yeah. The Harley will vibrate the ground, won't it? You can feel it. Well, it was a two stroke. Yeah. I mean, this was like a two stroke 125, but it had, if you ever heard like a Yamaha or a Suzuki, something like that it has that ping that ping 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 you know sound that's really just ear piercing yeah. you know and and the faster you get going you know i mean it's just a scream almost and yeah so i thought maybe that was irritating him but um i have a buddy that i work with and they have his family has like river property and he don't believe in bigfoot i'm pretty sure he doesn't i told him about my channel but I don't know if he believes in it, but he said his uncle or grandpa used to sit there on the porch on the Merrimack River way out there. And he would take this horse hair and run it through like this Folgers can and it would make like mm -hmm. this loud sound, like squealing sound. And he said when he'd do that, something would scream in the woods really loud. And wow. he'd tell, he would tell my buddy, he'd be like, come here, come here, boy. And he'd be like, listen to this. And he'd run that through that Folgers can and make that ear piercing sound and something would scream. But Well, I guess it was kind of like a call almost then. It was, or it was bothering them. Hurt, it was, it's yeah, annoying. hurting their ear. Something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I never really, you know, I never really believed in Bigfoot or anything like that, you know. Um, I had some other experiences with other things, but never really believed in Bigfoot until that you know and you know or whatever it was you know i don't know really what it was just big big and scary and hairy um can you describe the hair uh, was it more white or more gray, Is it it a dark looked, gray? you know kind of like uh what is that gorilla like the uh grayback or something like gorillas or something like that it kind of it looked like that, but the legs were straight, you know, and everything, and the legs were long, and it had a brownish, brownish kind of blackish brown to gray, more gray on its back, it looked like, from what I could see. You know, if mm -hmm. the sun ever hit it just a little bit, you know, like a reflection or whatever, you could just kind of see it, but, and, uh. I know when it was running, it didn't have like its arms out. It had its arms almost like a a blocker, you know, playing football or something. You know, it was like using its shoulder, just cracking through trees. And uh, I mean, have you heard of them going that, you know, running that fast before? Has anybody reported that? I've experienced it. And it was in a really weird spot. I used to live, I don't know, probably like five minutes from this area. And it was close to the interstate, I-44, and kind of close to the town. But there was woods in between that strip of I-44 and 66, Highway 66. But I was doing oh some whoops off the porch. You know, there's no houses really around them, kind of like two miles out of town. And I was just being stupid, really. But it sounded like something was crashing through the woods. And, I mean, it sounded like a truck was rolling through exactly. the woods. Exactly. That's and like, kind of what this was like. Yeah, yeah, and it just trailed through the woods, just, like, limbs snapping and cracking. And But, I mean, there was obviously no truck because, you know, you could just hear something moving and coming right at you. But it stopped right, right. at the wood line, right where you couldn't see it. And then I never heard that's another sound. This, that's what this one did. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And there it was, was like, something it, that else intimidation there. of, like, they try to right. intimidate you. Right. He was just enough, you know, for me to see it, you know, and for my dad to see it and get freaked out too, man. That's what really shook me afterwards, you know, because he'd seen a lot of war, you know, and stuff like that, a lot of carnage and stuff. And I mean, I'm, uh, I'm sure that probably freaked him out, but he, you know, this really freaked him out too. He was, he was shaken by it. 
But mm. there was something else, you know, like when we would go riding in the woods over there, we would actually stop at old graveyards and old abandoned buildings and stuff like that um, that were kind of, I don't know, left from a long time ago. And uh, there was a couple of times, you know, that you'd be in those buildings and you'd feel eyes on you or you'd feel just like you were being watched, but you wouldn't see anything, you know. So, man, we'd hop on our bikes and take off, you know. And I'd verify yeah. it was my dad. I'd be kind of like, you know, man, do you have any feeling? And he was like, yeah, he'd, he'd be like, you know, I, I, I kind of had a feeling something was watching us, kind of a creepy feeling. We get out of there, but you know, right? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to get the story out there. You know, people need to know, man. There's things in the woods that you can't explain, and I, I know there's people out there. You know, I've, I've only told a few people my story, and and they're kind of like, oh yeah, you know, you get the eye rollers and <laughs> you know. Some you know, things like that. People don't want to believe anything out the, you know, other than you know, the normal realm of things. But yeah, it's gotten it's got me, you know, to really start doing research on on uh, Bigfoot and things like that. You know, so yeah, uh, people need to okay. people need to better yeah. understand what's going on around them, especially if they live around the forest and use it exactly, daily. exactly. You know, um, there's things out there that we don't understand. Yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to mention, there's a video on the internet I saw, and the guy seemed pretty credible. And what he had was some footage of, like, a grayish-white, what looked to be a Sasquatch. It was just something massive in the woods. And it was in Canada, I believe, when during the summertime when it's real green. But, mm-hmm. man, it was just giant. But I think it was either on... I think Bob Gimlin has a YouTube channel or maybe some guy called like Cam Peterson or something like that. He yeah. talks about like the Indians and in Canada and different right. Sasquatch stories and legends. Yeah, yeah. There's places they won't even go in the forest. You know, there's, there's places they, they won't even go to do anything, you know, mm-hmm. but I'll try to find that video and share it with you and see what you think. Cause yeah, I've seen that'd, I, that'd be great. I have so many stories people aren't going to believe it but I'm always out there and I'm always trying to I'm always trying to get something new but um I seen a, a grayish white one and it's going to be in a future story of mine but like you said it had no neck this one had like a round head but yeah it didn't yeah, even it acknowledge the fact that I had the spotlight on him like he didn't even look over at me he just like walked through the clearing and continued on his way don't even care yeah they don't even care sometimes i guess you know i guess so you're invading their territory and stuff you know they're they're so powerful um yeah but but that was you know me and my dad used to go hunting all the time and we never had an experience up until that you know we dove hunted duck you know everything and that was the first experience that we ever had from being in the woods but you know really it only takes one time i guess then it kind of changes your outlook on being out there oh yeah it'll restart your your brain and you'll look at the world a completely different way and i think i think it's healthy for people i think people need that people need to understand that they don't know everything and i mean there's evidence of that all around the world like why don't we understand the pyramids why don't we know where they came from why don't the egyptians exactly. really even know you know and there's there's these things that once you understand the weird strange activity taking place around you you'll better understand all these other things in the world we can't figure out exactly. like the giant skeletons like the ufo exactly. stories yeah it makes more sense exactly I actually had a another encounter over here where I live now, and I've got two videos of it where uh, I won't even get into it, but it, it was crazy. I had to call the police, and the police came out, and they told me, don't go back out there in the woods. <laughs> yeah, they'll eventually so, move so, off. They'll tell yeah, people not was, to go in there for a while. Yeah, yeah, it was something crazy we saw. I saw it. My wife saw it. Um a sheriff came out and he saw it. Um, so 
he's, you know, there's, there's things, man, that, and it's kind of like when you least expect it, that's what's weird, you know, and, and maybe sometimes it's just, you have to be more open to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. These types of things happen when others. Yeah. These types of things happen when you least expect it. You can't be ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it's just, you know, it makes life interesting, I guess. <laughs> something different out of the normal. Yeah. It's good to know that there's something else out there. Other yeah, than us. exactly. 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 But, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Do they, do you think, you know, some people think they come from UFOs because, you know, they see UFO sightings in the area sometime. Um, you know, sometimes they say maybe they're scouts or something that are dropped out or, you know, I guess there's so many theories. Nobody really knows. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, there's all the UFO stories and yeah, they're just stories, but then you go to credible people that work, you know, within the government or military and they're pretty high up people telling telling the public that this is what's going on but you know everybody's got one eyebrow up and they're like i don't know but i mean that's what they're there for and they're trying to tell us i mean there has been people that have tried to tell us just because they haven't came out with it officially i mean they kind of have now this year but yeah it's getting a little more uh commonplace now i think more and more people are believing it yeah but I mean, when an astronaut comes back from space and tells us that that's what he saw or somebody exactly. in the military that was high clearance tells us that's what he saw. I mean, we should not only listen, but start looking and keep an eye out and be more understanding and open of it. Yeah, I know. I know some people think Bigfoot are like interdimensional beings, too. You know, they there's just so many theories. Um uh, now, who knows, man? It is strange how we can't find them. You know what I mean? Nobody can find them. They're everywhere. But yeah, once you see but, them, they're gone. They, once they disappear right, in that exactly. place, you may have like but, wood knocks and have strange activity and find tracks, but eventually they'll they'll move off. And right, it's just gonna and be. They're good at what they do. You know, they're good at hiding. And and people say, you know, well, you know, how come they never find bones and everything? Well, I think they have found some bones, but. They get carted away, you know, taken away or, um, you know, but sometimes you just don't find animal bones in the woods a lot. You know, I mean, they get animals die and they get picked apart by smaller animals and scattered. And, you know, who knows? They might have burial grounds somewhere, you know, that are just so obscure that nobody ever find them or who knows, man. Who knows where their bodies go when they die, if they die. Who knows? Yeah. If they eat it all or they take the pieces and put them in deep caves where nobody will find yeah. them. Or I don't know. Exactly. I don't know what they do. They take exactly. Them, take it back on the mothership and off That's it goes. another thing. That's <laughs> another possibility. Yeah. Who knows, man? But, yeah. Okay. Well. Shoot, I had some other questions I wanted to ask you, but I can't think of them right now. Um, in yeah, your area in, in, in Texas, life. is it mm-hmm. uh, is there a lot of hogs? I mean, it's Texas. I'm sure there is. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially South Texas. South Texas, there's a lot of a lot of hogs. We used to go down there and hunt them, hunt the wild boars and stuff. Man, or going to Mexico and hunt them too. It was yeah. like San Antonio or like Laredo or whatever. Yeah, further on down, you know, like around Alice and Valparaiso, down in that area, down by the King Ranch, places like that. Yeah, is it pretty dangerous pretty down cool. there, or is it pretty safe to go to? Uh, I think it's more dangerous now. <laughs> it used to yeah. be. I, I guess it's always been kind of dangerous. But mm-hmm. been, I noticed when I got to the border, when my family goes, it gets pretty sketchy. Like, you really yeah. got to watch your back. <laughs> exactly it's yeah, a different world a it's not like the rest of america <laughs> no no have you noticed a lot more deer this year i've noticed man there's there's been so many deer over by even where i live there's been you know big bucks i saw like a, a about a eight or he was an eight or ten point buck the other day and then there was about four doe with him 
Yeah. In 2018, there was a bunch of deer around here. And then 2019, I had my sightings. We don't see any deer. Even neighbors all around the forest are like, man, what happened to all the deer? What's going on? Really? Yeah, they think someone's poached them or somebody's logged too much. Uh, yeah. they just I mean, know. I know, but yeah, I just, I don't want to tell them like, oh, it's Sasquatch, you know, or it's Bigfoot. Yeah. But I mean, that's what I think yeah. it is. Because when they're oh, around, yeah. there were deer with their front legs broken, hobbling around in the yard. Um, I'd get trail cam pictures of deer with these big scratch marks and it'd be like three, like three or four right. scratches. And they're huge going along like the belly and all the way through the back ham. But right, I believe now, now there's that. none. Yeah. There's like none. I mean, maybe there's like a small eight pointer out there, a doe with two fawns, and like that's all you see. So when you go, you don't see anything because who knows where they're at? <laughs> yeah, well, they just know they can sense that. You know, if there's a a predator around, you know, they're not going to hang around. But uh, yeah, I I researched a few stories of of uh, Bigfoots, you know, breaking the legs on on deer so they can't get away and you know or just break their necks mm-hmm. they're so powerful i just can't even imagine something that powerful but it's like you know like the gorillas or even monkeys you know monkeys are are powerful too so yeah uh, any kind of ape-like creature like that and um man it's just it's crazy to think about how strong something would have to be you know to even break the trees or to just grab a deer and break its neck i mean that's yeah unreal. but i mean from the descriptions we get it has no neck and its arms exactly. are extremely long but its forearm sometimes is more massive than the bicep so if the forearm exactly. is that big you'll be able to snap trees like nothing like it's exactly toothpick. almost like popeye arms or something <laughs> yeah but i mean with that description it's not yeah. for it, it's for a reason. Nature designed that for oh, a reason. Yeah. Exactly, you know, and and, and the feet. Can, if you got big feet, that's for a reason. Kind of like ducks, you know, they have like the web paddle feet, you know, exactly. that's to swim, you know. And exactly. other animals have certain certain things they do. Every every animal has like an ability, like a Pokemon. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, and then they, they can just go up to a tree, you know, and snap it off, you know, and then put up their, you know, how they put the, uh, they lean the branches against each other, you know, to make like, it almost looks like a teepee structure or, you know, they're marking areas for, I don't know, hunting or something or territory. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, um, it's all of it. Probably. It's probably like yeah. a language. They got their, their smell on it the geometric pattern where it's at specifically i mean i think it's a lot of things tied into one and like how big it is you know shows okay you know little sasquatch could have not couldn't make this giant structure and you know it kind of shows okay there's a giant one in here an alpha lives here right right you know and i just i don't know man i'm hoping i'll get to see another one sometime have you returned to that area? It's been a long time. It's been years and years. Um, I've still got some relatives that live down there, so but we haven't been there in a long time. But uh, yeah. I'd like to know if you know anybody else in that area has ever seen anything. You know, they've talked about having. Uh, I know my cousin and some other people have said they've seen uh, black panthers down there. You know, the big cats. They've mm-hmm. seen those in the woods before, and there's there were some hunters that I talked to, you know, and then people just blow it off like, oh man, you know, y'all are nuts, you know. But I've had some hunters actually tell me, you know, that they've seen some big cats down there in the woods. So you know, if those are down there, man, anything can be down there. Yeah, you you want to know something crazy? I just oh, got boy. off the phone two hours before we got before we started talking with another guy from Texas and I'm pretty sure he's near your area, but he was just telling me about the black cats and I think he said he had a picture of it. And yeah, he got really? screamed, at, screamed at somewhere. I can't say close to you cause Texas is like the size of Alaska, if not bigger. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there was, 
actually where I'm at, there was a siding that was about maybe two miles from me in a creek. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said that they saw one. Then it came up out of the creek and crossed the two lane highway and went back down into the creek on the other side. So, yeah. You know, there well, was a few people that saw it. So, what area was this? It was in, uh, this is more, I live more in West Texas. So central, kind of central West Texas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were actually talking about, me and that other guy from Texas, how aggressive the Bigfoots are in Texas. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I just, uh, it could be the environment down here. I mean, man, they can, you know. Texas is so big. Everything seems like it's more aggressive here. You know, the bobcats and everything, you know, maybe not. Maybe not, but it just seems like they are, you know. Um, Texas the hogs is really so dangerous, big. too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I've been chased by them before. You know, they'll try to tear you up. <laughs> so, when, so when people go out in the woods, like, what are things to watch out for, like dangers? Just be aware, you know, I mean, that's the main thing is just, you know, don't go into the woods just thinking, you know, man, I'm going to go on a hike and nothing can happen. You know, there's there's bad snakes, you know, there's rattlesnakes, there's bobcats. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, man. People just, you know, since me and my dad hunted all the time, he always, you know, showed me how to track and, you know, different you know what different uh paw prints look like you know how to discern what's what how to tell how long the print's been there by you know maybe the bugs that have fell into the track or you know how messed up the ground around it is you know he always taught me that stuff um but he always yeah. told me don't go into the woods thinking that you're you're like the uh, head of you know the top of the food chain he said because there's things out here you know that can kill you you know, and that always stuck in my mind from being a little kid. And yeah. he just always taught me, you know, just be aware of your surroundings when you're out in the woods, you know, and don't, don't take anything for granted. And, uh, you know, and if there's things like Bigfoot out there, you know, you know, who knows, man, you really got to be aware. I remember that story of those guys. I can't remember where it was, but. They were way out in the middle of nowhere. It was like a logging camp or something like that. And the Bigfoot would surround them at night and kind of throw like huge boulders and everything into the camp up on the, the shack they were staying in. And they'd hear whoops all night, you know, and footsteps all around the outside of the, the whole compound. And, you know, they were terrified. A lot of them never went back. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, what's your theory on how the Bigfoots know people are coming? Like how they're able to keep that distance and pretty much do what they do. Do you think like it's something tied into like the Nephilim theory? Like they're psychic or not? I don't know if, if psychic is I the think word. They, but... Yeah. I think they sense it somehow. They're, they've got a real high sense, I think. Um, well, I guess what I'm saying, you know, like heightened there? sense, like a leopard or like heightened sense, like something paranormal. I, I think it's more paranormal or, or, you know, even supernatural or something, you know, mm -hmm. not really knowing what they are, but it seems like they can really avoid people, but yet they can just be right where they can observe you and you might see them you might not but they know you're there so they always have that advantage and i guess that goes back you know from them being on on earth for who knows how long you know i guess they've been around like you talk about the nephilim and everything you know that's I used to say you know maybe they're not some kind of descendant or something from the nephilim or you know who knows yeah it's not a nephilim maybe like a byproduct of their existence like maybe something they created right. while they were here on this planet 
Yeah, could be. Could be. Mm. You know, that's just like the giant skeletons, you know, they found that were in the Smithsonian and, you know, all of a sudden they're gone. You know, they had, I don't know how many skeletons that were nine foot plus and, you know, they went and they just disappeared. I know you probably heard about that. Yeah, I just found out that my uh, old baseball coach, his dad, actually found a giant skeleton in the area that I find, like, the giant X structures and all the big structures. And Mm -hmm. he claims the Smithsonian's came and took it. And he was actually on the History Channel. I can't find the episode, but I can't wait to watch it. Wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah, that's wild. But I know, I know, old Indian burial grounds and stuff like that, or they think they're Indian burial grounds. You know, had they had giants in them. They found quite a few of those. And uh, yeah, the Smithsonian would send people out. You know, they would confiscate the bones, or you know, maybe get them by saying, you know, oh, you know, we're gonna go put these on display and or something, and they just take them and be gone. You never ever see them again. You know, they don't they don't want people to know the truth yeah that's that's a sad thing but to it's see kind of like when you when you when you see something that's you know like a bigfoot or something like that it really opens you up to really wanting to learn and and do some research and try to find a little more it kind of it sticks with you you know yeah it's it's like you know I'm like 14 years old, you know, and it's stuck with me all these years. Um, like yeah. uh, where I'm at right now, I'm pretty far out in the woods, in, and uh, we'll hear the coyotes at night and things like that. But then, you know, you wonder what, what are they, you know, really after, you know, what's going on really out in the woods? You don't know, you know. And, some people say that other animals, so, you know, who knows? Can you say that again? You kind of cut out. Oh, have you heard of like people saying that uh, Bigfoot can mimic other animals? Oh, yeah, I've sometime? experienced it. Yeah, I've experienced it a few times. Yeah, that's. That's pretty wild because you know they're they're out in nature and I'm sure you know they're not they're not stupid <laughs> they're pretty smart beings yeah. I think they can mimic anything I'm sure like a baby crying or the sound of like children right. playing or an yeah. animal an elk I don't know whatever you want it to be they'll do it <laughs> right right right. Man, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I got to tell my story, you know. Yeah, uh, I'm glad we finally got to sad. talk. Yeah, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, I it need to like find a way to send my... against this conversation, but somehow we got it to, to hey, work that's, out. That's always, that's always the case, man. <laughs> you know, <I> know. <laughs> when, when, when there's truth involved or something, there's always a force against us. <laughs> right. All of a sudden the internet doesn't work and apps start crashing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anytime there's a collaboration about anything, you know, a little supernatural or something, I think, you know, something yeah. just doesn't want the truth, truth to come out. But yeah. And I think that's just the way the universe roles like how there's good and evil but i mean like i don't know it seems like things unfold for a reason (laughs) right right i need to try to get you my two videos i need to send them to you somehow they're on uh they're on my uh iphone which i don't Mm -hmm. have any service on it right now but i don't know if i could send them to you maybe over the wi-fi or something i'll try to find a way send it to you or uh maybe email it to you or something like that okay yeah that'll work um i wanted to ask you are there oops sorry i cut you off no no that's fine no go ahead no i was gonna ask you are there any reports of like hunters or people going missing in the big forested areas in texas i'm sure there is 
I'm sure there is. You know, that really got me to uh, start re- researching like the, uh, I don't know if I can say it on your channel or not, but the missing, what the guy put out. Uh, oh, the missing 411? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah. I think they got yeah, their okay. show on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been checking that out a little bit too, man. And That's another thing like, like what my dad said, you know, hey, you can't go into the, you shouldn't go into the forest thinking, you know, that nothing's going to happen to you or whatever, you know, you got to be prepared. And, uh, I just can't believe the amount of people that go missing in the forest. And then I got to look in doing some research on tunnels that are actually underground in like in the, uh, where the forests are and everything. And like there's big areas of missing people that's where a lot of these tunnels are have you ever checked that out no so you think people are getting dragged into these cave systems don't or? know don't know don't know what it is really but yeah you need to research that too that's kind of there's a map that somebody put out that has yeah. like a lot of the cave systems and underground tunnels and where there's a lot of real big like uh groups of people that are missing it's kind of like almost where the openings are in a lot of these caves and tunnels mm-hmm. uh, it might not be too far away from them so but what if we can't what, what, what if we can't get there like physically like we dig and all we find is dirt and rocks but these exactly. supernatural beings can go in and out and i know that sounds stupid but through. the way these big no, no, are moving that's... like with the orbs and the lights and people i don't know exactly. say they see them go into portals Maybe maybe that does sound absurd, but what if that's the reality of what's going on? Like, why was Stonehenge created? And, like, the Mayan temples, they say, like, you know, those were doorways, exactly. you know, carved into the rocks. And they don't know how they could ever, have carved that. Have you that. ever checked so, out the Skinwalker so right. Ranch? Yeah. So, I mean, there's got to be something Are to do. There? With... Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm cutting out a little bit. Oh, okay there yeah oh okay have you ever checked out the skinwalker ranch yes i have yeah that one that one gets me <laughs> all the things they've seen there that one that one is really that's really wild yeah and that's the thing is they got a camera cameraman out there multiple cameras out on the property Mm -hmm. and they're always studying it, but they can only get little pieces here and there, which is good evidence. But I'm saying like, that's how hard it is. And people need to realize it. Like anything can just shoot off at any moment, in any direction, anywhere. And for you to have your camera pointed at it at the right time, at the right moment, it's very hard to do. Exactly. Exactly. Plus I think, you know, even like the Bigfoots, I think if you're trying to film one, you know, and everybody's always saying, you know, well, the, why can't we get real clear pictures? Well, there's there are some clear pictures, but I think they can kind of interfere with the whole process of, you know, filming or or taking pictures sometimes. You know, yeah. they might have some type of force or something that interferes with that. Mm-hmm. You know, or if it's even if it's natural, they're so well tapped into the world that they know that something's changed or they know how to sense it in some way. Exactly. Exactly. I'm <laughs> My dog's going nuts. <laughs> Calm down. Okay. Well, do you have any more but to man, share with us? Well, I don't want to cut you off. So. Um, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I just want people to know, you know, that there, there's some things out there. Just be open to it, you know, be open to something different. Um, yeah. And if you're from most Texas, people just get, yeah, if you're from Texas. Tell I'd us like your story. Know, yeah. I'd like to know if other people, you know, have seen things in Texas, you know, that'd be great. If, uh, Cause I know there's gotta be a lot of stories out there, but, you know, it's like me, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to tell just anybody my stories because people don't want to, most people, you know, they just like being in their, their own, you know, their, their surroundings and, 
don't want to go outside their comfort zone and everything. If you tell them anything, mm-hmm. you know, any spiritual or supernatural or anything outside the normal realm, yeah. a lot of people will back off, you know, they'll back off from you. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to hear it. It makes them so, uncomfortable. And... Yeah, they don't. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, if more people would be open to it. Um, I think there would be more experiences, probably. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure I there's people. I appreciate you having me on the show, though, too, oh. man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I appreciate you getting getting on the show and talking to everybody or tell your story. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, so. I guess... Uh, if you have any more questions or if you want to get in contact later, just email me okay. or shoot me a message and I'll be glad to talk. Okay. Okay. And like I say, I want to try to get you my videos over here. So see what you think. I just kind of want your uh, input on it. What you think it might have been. Okay. Yeah. I'd be glad to look at it and give you my opinion. Okay. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Well, thanks All for right. the thanks for the talk, man. It's it's good to get it out sometimes, you know, and to like minded people. Um, you know, I thought my wife, my story, she gets scared. <laughs> yeah, that's understandable. Okay, well, I appreciate you uh, talking with me today, Patrick, and getting a hold of me. Well, once again, we have another ice sighting where the person is sure of what they witnessed. I believe Patrick and his father were being escorted out of the area by the Bigfoot and possibly an alpha male. It could be the noise and vibrations of the bikes that triggered and angered the Sasquatch. The reason I say it could be an alpha male is because of the description of the fur being gray and, of course, by its behavior. I think it is so amazing how they can be so quiet and remain undetected but yet be so loud and aggressive when they decide to be. Even if this is not a primate and some type of multidimensional being, they do exhibit some primate behavior as far as the bluff charging, tree breaking, and some of the vocalizations we have heard, such as their whoop calls. Again, I can only theorize on what really happened from what I've heard. All right, in the next segment of this video, we have another phone call from the state of Texas, so stay tuned. Welcome to Sasquatch Theory, and I appreciate you getting in contact with me and taking the call. Sure, sure, no problem. Um, you want me to go ahead and uh, and start? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you would uh, get into it and tell us all when your encounter started and when everything happened, I- I'd like to give your audience a little bit of background on myself. Um, yeah, if you would. I- um, I was, uh, I grew up from a very religious family and, uh, I was introduced into the auto repossession industry at a very early age, 18, 19 years old. And of course I was hooked right away and I spent many years doing that. And then, you know, of course that got old, you know, uh, being beat on, spit on, shot at, shot around, mm-hmm. um, it got, that, that got a little old so i you know went into the office side of it and uh and then into skip tracing and investigation so um hunted all my life you know and enjoyed that's something i enjoyed you know i fed three children right away um we had a lot of wild game and uh my my wife and i uh her her grandparents uh lived in brought us and i brought us texas um mm-hmm. it's up by lake sam rayburn um close to angelina national forest and i and i gotta tell you i did not at all believe in the subject matter of course we watched the shows 
uh, and all that finding Bigfoot and uh, you know I thought that you know it's just, that's hogwash. Uh, it didn't that didn't exist. That didn't you know it's it's just TV you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so during the time you know I'd go up there and her grandfather would ask me, son, you want to go out and you're going to go out and hunt? I said yes, sir. And I, I didn't get to make it every year, of course, because the job that I had. At the time that I did, you know, get to make it, I, I was able to go out and hunt. I'd tell him yes, sir. And something down in there was just um, always very eerie and quiet. Should be teeming, you know, with wildlife. And, you know, at the time, I, I still didn't believe in, in, in the subject matter at all. Um, and, you know, I'd go into some places and the hair stand up on the back of my neck and goosebumps. I'm like, what's you know what's going on that's you know it's it was just a weird feeling uh of fear and that i needed to leave so i would just you know turn around and ease out of that area and uh i hunted there many years i only seen one deer and the deer that i seen looked like it had been run to death i mean just tongue hanging out it stopped at the top of a little ridge coming down to a little a small creek or branch and uh it was just gassed i said mm-hmm. what could be you know what could be chasing that thing you know i i had no idea so one year i believe it was around 2010 2011 it, it would you know christmas time you know all the family would get together and you know they a lot of the family they drank and not and whatnot that's not my thing i didn't really uh, i didn't drink so i didn't get into that i asked my wife i said hey you want to go down to the uh to the forest and see if we can't get a pig she said sure so we um we eased on down there and walked off in the woods and they had just logged and they had they had some family that had some tracts of land that backed up to the forest and uh they had just logged some areas and the, and the timber was fell right there so they just they hadn't picked it up yet and so uh i had earlier i had put some uh some corn out i think the day before and so we're just going to go sit on that corn pile and it was it was really cold that night it doesn't usually get that cold in texas it was i think it was in the teens i mean really cold and uh, we're sitting there we're probably there a good 30 minutes uh, 45 minutes um, you know tops and all of a sudden these coyotes and birds sounded like birds i don't know what kind of birds they were ducks um you know sound like something busted into a chicken coop and you know just uh of course there was no chicken coops down or chickens down there but it was sound like birds and they just started cutting up screaming hollering and the coyotes were going off and the, and then all of a sudden this sound just burst out i mean it was extremely loud the only way i could describe it would probably be uh, standing in front of a heavy metal you know rock and roll stage with the speakers and uh, godzilla and uh, the rock singer screaming at the same time in extremely, extremely loud. It lasted probably 15, 20 seconds straight. I mean, just screaming really loud and, lo- you know, deep and high tone at the same time. How that's possible, I don't know. Um, it was uh, at that point, I knew that uh, there was something else out there in the woods. And, um, I turned to my wife and I said, what in the blank was that? She says, I don't know. I said, we better ease on out of here. And so, you know, we went back and I, I questioned uh, her grandfather. He was 90 at the time. And I said, have you ever heard or seen anything strange? And and he just, he, he seemed like he didn't want to talk about it. You know, and just, and he said, no, you know, just, um, no, no, nothing ever happened like that. Never heard nothing like that. And um, that uh, really piqued my interest, you know, in the subject. I said, there's something else out here in these woods than just, you know, humans hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I attributed me not seeing anything because he had told me that uh, 
uh, one of the officials there in town, their their kin folks were running dogs, running deer with dogs. And I said, well, I guess, the you know, they're just poached out. They're just, you know, over hunting and poaching and I'm not seeing anything. Um, down closer to the coast, I had at least 500 acres and it was just teeming with wildlife. And that forest should have been the same way, if not more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's not. So, you know, I was really curious. So I, I'm, you know, throughout the years, I've tried to contact people, you know, through her family because her family's all grown up there. And coincidentally, my family on my mother's side is about an hour north of there towards the Louisiana border. Um, by the Sabine National Forest, and I've hunted in there. Same scenario, very just eerily quiet, nothing moving. It's you know very strange, and and of course I've researched and researched. You know, you know, doing my background, that's naturally I wanted to to research and you know see what you know what it you know what's going on. And there's been so many different encounters in both areas. It's it's unbelievable. So, you know, there is something out there that's real. I, you know, I don't know, you know, what they are. Yeah. Um, but uh, they outclass humans. Uh, they way outclass us. I mean, they're um, smarter, faster, stronger. Uh, and there's plenty of evidence to show that. Um, you know, I believe that the, uh, I believe that the officials, they know what they are. Um, not maybe not completely, and I, I don't believe they want to provoke because of you know their ability, you know what has the ability to break you know bigger than a baseball bat ten foot up just snap it and then twist it. I, I don't know of anything. You know, right, an elephant at best. Uh, you know, yeah. so her my wife's uh, mother's had a friend. She has cancer now, so she's. She had one of the last places on that on that lake she just sold within the last couple of years uh, when she learned she got cancer. And uh, I told uh, my wife, I said, well, have her, 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 her ask her friend, has she ever seen or heard anything down there? And, and, she, and it was just as a matter of fact, she goes, oh, yeah, those things have been down there for a long time. Like, like it was normal, but nobody else would talk to me about it. Uh, I've mm-hmm. tried to uh, talk to other folks about it, and they look at you like you got a third eye, you know, or you just fell off a turnip truck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate you letting me, you know, tell my story without being ridiculed because I've tried to tell other people, and they're, you know, um, been ridiculed for the for us. Um, you know, that's uh, they're out there. They're real. And, uh, you know, maybe yeah. they will learn what they really are. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, that's just the way it is that if you have a story or uh, you saw something and you try to tell somebody, they're going to ridicule you, most likely. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Be, until it happens to them. Right. Um, like I said, I didn't believe in it. I thought it was hogwash. I, I hadn't, until that happened, you know, I, I always said I had. I would need to see it. Well, I didn't need to see it. And I'm not going, I'm not going out. I don't search for them. I don't look for them. Um, my youngest one, her significant other, um, his, his parents have uh, 200 and some odd acres out near Warren, Texas. That's by the big thicket. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were out there uh, a couple of months ago and uh, on the Creek bank and amongst some briars, there was a single footprint, but the footprint was six inches wide and about the size of a ten and a half shoe. Mm. And uh, I thought, you know, it was probably a couple of weeks old. You know, I, I like I said, I've hunted all my life, so you know, I, I can cut track pretty good. Uh, it was probably, you know, that wasn't real defined, but you could tell it was a human. We, nobody had a phone on. We were going swimming in the creek uh, at an old train trestle, but they were kind of taking us around and showing us the property and whatnot. And I said, do y'all see this? And uh, they're like, yeah. I said, there's nobody who's going to be out here in the middle of these briars barefooted. So, there, you know, there's definitely 
something out there. And like I said, they outclass us big time. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They, um, I mean, they. The vocalization that you heard, um, approximately how loud or how long was it? It was at least 15 to 20 seconds uh, in duration. Not, no, no in between. I mean, just straight through and extremely, extremely loud. You could feel it. Is, mm-hmm. is how loud it was. Now, are there and, a lot of hills there? It, it's some sloughs and ravines, but hills, not really. Um, so he was pretty yeah. leveled with you guys, just deeper into the woods? or Well, there, there's some draws, that, you know, and that where the runoff goes into the reservoir. So, mm-hmm. you know, you'll go, you'll go up. But, I mean, if, if it, they're hills, they're small hills, you know nothing uh, there'll be some ravines and you know where the water just washes washes it out gets deeper and deeper out through throughout the years you know running towards the towards the lake and yeah you know the before that happened you know i would hear um what they call wood knocks now but i didn't know that's what that was i would hear that and i would think it would just be one just be you know one thong real loud and i slipped that has to be the biggest woodpecker I've ever heard. I thought it was a you know giant woodpecker, mm. and uh, you, you you can't you know you're trying to put something in you know put it into a box in your mind what you just heard, and of course that's it wasn't a woodpecker doing that uh, you know I thought yeah. I was being you know I was the predator I was being sneaky you know something was watching me. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think you got screamed at because you encroached on their territory? I don't know. I, you know, it's possible. Like they didn't want you there? Yeah, it's it's possible. I mean, if evil had a sound, that, that's, that scream was evil. I mean, it, it had a low, 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 along with a high pitch at the same time. I don't know what does that. I don't yeah. know any animal that could do that for that amount of time or has a lung capacity to do that. Right. I mean, that, it, it was just incredible. And, uh, you know, there's, like I said, that those woods should be teeming with wildlife. And uh, you rarely see anything. I, at least I did. rarely seen anything. Um, mm-hmm. Birds, you know, every once in a while, uh, a couple of ducks. But you know, some, something's running that something's running that game in there. Yeah, um, you know that little buck that ran up on me. I mean, his tongue just hanging out of his mouth like he'd been running forty miles. I said, something had that poor thing gassed out. You know. And, yeah. And this this was before that happened to us. You know, I I, I didn't know. You know, and, I, and then, you know, I'd walk into areas like I tell you, I'd walk into those areas, and in some of those areas, and you just. Uh, you know, the hair stand up and you get this weird feeling like dread, you know, scared. Like you, you need to leave. You need to leave. Mm-hmm. And so that's just what I did. It was just I didn't run. It did, I didn't walk fast. I just turned around and eased out just like I eased in. Yeah. OK. So have you been back to the area since? I uh, I went back one other time. And that was the time that I seen the buck come and I didn't go into the national forest. I hunted a 60 acre um, pasture that bordered the forest that that was family owned there. Mm -hmm. And that's when uh, that's when that deer ran up on me like that. Um, It's changed my perspective of being out. You know, I, I love the woods. I love being in the woods. It's you know, it's peaceful. It's tranquil. Um. But it's really changed the way that I pay attention. I really pay attention in the woods now. I don't want to be scared out of the woods, but, uh, you know, that's it's really changed the way I look, you know, look at things when I do go in the woods. And I still go in the woods by myself, you know. Um, I I don't necessarily want to see one. I don't want to be scared out of the woods. You know, Mm -hmm. that's that's one of the things that I really like and and still enjoy is the woods right yeah yeah i hear a lot of people say that that they don't want to see one because they don't want to have the forest ruined for them no i don't want that one for me and and you know i was as you know i was apprehensive and you know kind of nervous 
um, talking to you, um, mm -hmm. I would like to encourage others to, you know, come forward, tell their story, um, you know, put it out there. And it needs to be heard because these things are out there. And uh, yeah, I no think doubt. the more we hear, the more we learn, you know, there's mm -hmm. consistencies, you know, there's consistencies in, in, in things. And if you pay attention, you know, there's consistencies in these things. And I think these, these orbs of light, they have, uh, they have something to do with it. I don't know what, but they have something to do with it. I mean, because mm -hmm. too many, too many stories, people see the orbs along with these creatures. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it had my, uh, good friends of mine that I, that I pig hunt with, with dogs. Um, he and his father went out and they didn't see a creature, but they seen the light and they really didn't, uh, you know, Daryl's he's up at, in his sixties and he just had a second stroke and, uh, you know, it's, he still tries to, you know, drag himself out there and, you know, let the, let the young ones go hunting and that, you know, he's really, he really enjoys, that's his passion, you know? And, uh, he said, man, it was weird. His son had a, had a pig down and they see this light coming through the woods and he thought it was one of the, the landowners or uh, one of the ranch hands. And he's yelling at him. He's yelling at the light. Come help me. I've got a, I've got a hog. Come help me. And uh, they went over there after, you know, they did their deal with the pig and that. They went over there and there wasn't nothing there. Nothing there. The light was gone. They, they said it was the strangest thing. Yeah, that is strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can you tell the audience, like, kind of your hobbies, what you like to do? You're a, you're a big pig hunter correct yeah yeah but uh, yeah we pig used to pig hunt every sunday every sunday morning we we uh, run pigs with with uh, dogs a lot of landowners and farmers uh you know they're just tearing up their crops yeah and, and they're extremely dangerous too yes yes they are um we've we've taken some big ones out i mean some really big ones mm -hmm. uh, i sent you a few pictures of, of just a few but I think uh, my buddy has an album book, and if I find some more photos, I'm sure he has them. I'll send them to you. We've, uh, yeah, we've pig hunted a long time. You know, you can uh, you can hunt them year round. Um, you know, they're invasive here, and uh, like I said, a lot of the farmers they don't want them on their, you know, they don't want them on their land. Um, and a lot of folks are. are hunt them out of uh, helicopters which i don't necessarily agree with i don't I, we eat them you know mm -hmm. we we don't nothing goes to waste i mean yeah, those people like take it to like a factory and they make dog food out of it or something yeah yeah we we eat them you know we eat all of them we do all the processing ourselves um you know grind you know ground meat add fat to it if we need to because it's a, it is lean meat because they're you know they're wild or, you know, run and having to forage for what they get. Mm -hmm. But that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things I really enjoy is, is going out, you know, just, you know, congregating and, uh, and pig hunting with some real good people. I mean, just really good people. Yeah. I've heard stories where there's people like hunting at night with night vision and they encounter mm -hmm. like Bigfoots and stuff. Yeah, uh, that's, have you ever heard any of those stories? Yeah, that's uh, that's incredible. I don't know uh, if I want that or not. Yeah. yeah. Well, now, like, since 2018, they got the night vision that records. So hopefully we get some footage or something. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's pictures out there, um, but, you know, it's just not acknowledged, you know, there's more evidence out there, you know, since I've started looking into this thing, you know, there's more evidence out there than, you know, people have been put in prison for less evidence. You know what I mean? So there's no yeah. short shortage of evidence of, of, of it, its existence. Yeah. The evidence is out there. It's just spread across the board. And then you got to go through the hoaxes and the people that are bashing it and just oh, the people oh. that, have the wrong idea about it and then you got to find the videos that have that story to it behind it and 
the location and i think i don't know there's a lot of factors that go into it sure sure and and a lot of people i've heard had good good stories or good encounters i i wouldn't trust them you know i wouldn't trust them either i think they can be very deceitful mm. i'm sure a, a person could be nice and then turned up to be not so nice later you know what i mean and there is a big cat uh, my cousin raises sheep and it was just slaughtering his sheep just slaughtering my brother and i found the tracks and found the tree where it was climbing up and laying in the bow of a tree overlooking a big meadow and watching those sheep yeah i mean we're talking a big cat really a, you know 200 pound a big big cat um but there were some exotics um that dr brown have you ever heard the name marcus luttrell well he was in the last uh the last man standing the the guy that made it out of uh iran or afghanistan his whole 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 team was uh, wiped out mm -hmm. and you've heard that name well my he that's my uh aunt's neighbor marcus marcus is my aunt uh, mary's neighbor and his father-in-law owns ducks unlimited and dr brown had the ranch on the other side of them dr brown had a bunch of exotics he had giraffes he had zebras he had lions so i think one of his cats got out over there and yeah. uh, dr brown died he committed suicide they found him in a hotel with a million in cash or two million in cash and so now uh brad with ducks unlimited he's bought all the ranch the uh, ranch land around my aunt's ranch but uh that's a that's some beautiful country there beautiful country yeah but uh, we were we were actually looking to move back up towards east east texas um, from where we are now i mean it's just become too populated for us i'm a you know i'm not a real people person you know i i like to stay to myself i like to work by myself um and it's just come become populated like you wouldn't believe here i mean really? they're just building houses left and right luckily i'm up next to 1300 acres my property here is so i've got some really nice deer here i mean some big big buck 20 you know 20 inch spread in between the center beam bucks i mean mm -hmm. nice size white tails for this area you know on the coast yeah but you know their their plans to uh, subdivide all that, and uh, I don't like that. You know, right? Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I, I a lot of people there. from California are like telling people to move to Texas because it's a yes. really nice place. But it's like you stay in California. Yes, yes, yes. She uh, we don't want it to be like California. No, they they've tried to do Austin that way, and it didn't work out. And they finally went in and cleaned the streets up. I mean, it was terrible yeah if you've seen it on the news or not i mean austin was just in shambles um tents everywhere like on skid row you know in california i guess that's los angeles all mm -hmm. up under the underpasses i mean it was just people urinating in the streets it was terrible horrible right yeah so you know the people are pushing more and more this way and like when you when you texted me the other day my wife had just got a text asking for me this address interested in buying and uh, they've been contacting other family members trying to get in touch with me because i essentially live on a small island I, i'm in between dickinson bay and galveston bay so there's water surrounding all four sides of us. Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason you know it's the real estate's just shot through the roof and uh, I'm on a half acre here, and I, I lease another acre from the uh, the old light company, which is the 1,300 acres next to me. And the rest of it, a man runs cattle on. But yeah, if you you I don't have a problem. That's your show. You you fuse the two together. You know how you edit it. See how you you know how you see fit. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. That's that's yours. Your show, I, I just, uh, I, you know, I want to see you succeed. I think you, I like the way you do your editing and stuff and, and that, and it's, uh, the, the name's perfect, you know, 
because it's really what it is is a theory. What do Miguel? What do you think they are? What do you think they are? I mean, I don't. I personally think, and I know it sounds nuts, but I think they they really are living out there, and they are physical creatures. But I don't know what kind of voodoo stuff they figured out or what religion they practice, because I do think they can do some some strange things. Well, I also think that they're physical, Mm -hmm. but there's some type of spiritual. There has to be some type of spiritual involvement. I mean, what nothing has, you know, the lung power or the strength, the brute size and strength that they, you know, they have. Their their brain is so massive, it's just hard to tell what they're capable of. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, like I said, they way outclass us. Mm -hmm. Whatever they are, they way outclass a human being. Yeah. And we thought we were at the top. We're not. Right. Yeah, we're definitely not. Well, I know you got work to do, and so uh, I'm going to, I'll let you go. And so you have a good day, and I appreciate you letting me on. Yeah, Paul, it was a. Good having you on, and I'll I'll create the show probably uh, within a, a month. I would sure. say. Okay. For sure, not not a not a problem. Yeah, there's just too many credible witnesses uh, that you know thousands upon thousands that that have seen these things. So mm-hmm. they're out there, and you know I, I don't I no longer deny it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, before I did until that happened, I said, there's no son. That's something that's not. I don't personally, I don't feel they belong here. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't I don't believe they were meant to be here, but nevertheless, they're here. Yeah, yeah, it seems yeah. to be. Yeah. OK, okay. Well, you, you well, have I a appreciate good... you um, talking with me and telling your story. Sure. All right. Thanks a lot, Miguel. Yep. Thank you. And you have a good day, sir. Thank you too. Mm-hmm. Bye.